It's serious. And silly. Seriously. Silly, but serious. But silly. With Scott and Sheila. <laughs> Monday morning edition, Sheila. That's Although right. this, will, this will air on uh, Thursday. This is a Monday morning. So we, we will take a moment to like loosen up and <laughs> get ready because we have a very special guest today. Um, she is the uh, Director General of the Champlain Regional College. Uh, a lot of people don't know that uh, Champlain St. Lambert has a couple brothers and uh, we will let uh, Dr. Odette Cote talk about that. Um, so welcome, Odette. How are you today? I'm fine, thank you. Serious and silly, thank you so much for having thought about me. Um, I'm glad to be on the air with you. Well, we are very glad to hear you and we are uh, to have you with us. And we are going to jump right into it and ask you uh, if you can talk to us a little bit about your role at the college and uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Okay, great. So my role at the college is that I'm Director General for Champlain Regional College. We are the only college or the only CGEP out of the 48 in the province that is multi-regional. And that's right. We have a constituent college at St. Lambert, where you're both at. We have another one in Lennoxville. We have another one in Quebec City by the name of St. Lawrence. And we always forget, but we have to mention that there is an administrative office in the city of Sherbrooke, where people try and utilize the, mutualize the services for, uh, for the full college, because sometimes there's cost savings, which is really important, because everything we do is about student success. Every dime we can save, can be put towards something that a student wants to do. Mm -hmm. And yes. I have to say that my, my role as uh, Director General basically is that I report to the Board of Governors and I'm responsible for the effective uh, use of resources, whether that be financial, human, or technological. And that's why I'm saying that there's a central administrative office where we try and make sure that everything we do has cost savings because every, like I said, every dime or penny that we save can go into something that's interesting for students. That is our mission. Our mission is uh, students. And uh, so you want to know a little bit about myself? Yes, yeah. please. 30, 30 years of experience into the college network in the province of Quebec, of which of, uh, 20 years were into teaching in either private, public institutions, small, medium, large, French and English, and also at the university level, Université de Montréal. Mm -hmm. so people say, oh, how did you go from your former um, you know, profession to this one? Well, it's been many, many years of being involved. And when I was a teacher, I also became a coordinator. And being a coordinator and having developed many, many international projects for students, for their engagement, I had a chance to work with the administration. And working with the administration and doing everything that I was doing at my department, I thought, oh my God, I'm doing so much for my department. I felt that, for example, I had developed an organogram of about 25 international, uh, international projects for students. Mm -hmm. And I realized that that is so big. That could actually be for my whole college, not just for my department. And we actually doubled the number of students that were in the department because they were so engaged in these exciting projects abroad. Um, so with my involvement as a coordinator, I worked so much with the administration that I eventually said, oh my goodness, I think I can do, uh, make a difference for the whole college in itself. And eventually I became uh, at another college a faculty dean and then a director of studies and eventually a director general. So that's oh, just yeah. the, the experience around the academic area. Wow. Yes, amazing. <laughs> and thank you for uh, pointing out our friends in Sherbrooke. Uh, I have them on speed dial and I don't want to, uh, I don't, I want them to continue to answer my calls and, and emails. So shout out to my friends in Sherbrooke. You are definitely a, a big part of the success of the Champlain Colleges. Sheila, take it away. I'm taking it away. So actually, Odette, you, you did mention um, student success and uh, it's obviously a topic that is, uh, is prominent. We talk about it a lot uh, here at Champlain. Uh, you mentioned it, um, but we would like you maybe to touch a little bit about what actually is student success? What does that mean to you 
because we do speak about, you know, the importance of grades and our, and our scores, but we wanted to dive a little bit more of like, what does student success mean, mean to you? Well, you're right, Sheila. We often speak about the R score and the grades. I call that academic success, which is really, 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 really important because we want our students to succeed, right, academically. But for me, student success is more of a self-realization. It's much more holistic. Mm -hmm. Success of the students, not just academically, but as a whole person. Um, you know, everything we do at the college uh, is like our core mission is student success. And for students, like both of you are in student services, right? So why do we have student services in all the colleges? It's because you offer so many other things besides the academic area. Mm -hmm. So you, you allow students to be engaged either in sports or social cultural. Uh, we have services. Uh, students who are having difficulties, who need peer tutoring, um, uh, difficulties in class, or sometimes it's on health issue. Everything that you do actually contributes to that student success. So um, I don't know if some of you remember, like whenever I'm invited to your constituent college at the beginning of the year where we greet all of the students, your uh, constituent college director, Don Chuan, says, oh, that could you say a few words? And I always, you know, there's quite a few students there. And I say, well, to be successful, there are three important things. First, the first one is being gay. Uh, sorry, the first one is choose the right program. If you're in the right program, you won't be counting your hours. You're going to say, oh my God, I'm still doing my homework in Smith. I, I can't believe it. I have to go to bed. I love this. If you're not feeling that you're, you're liking the program or you're having difficulties, I said, you know, go see some people in student services. They will be able to guide you. The academic advisors will be able to guide you somewhere else. So make sure you're in the right program is number one. Number two, engagement. And at that session, the welcoming session, we have what, about 30 students who are there for the students, uh, the different student clubs. Uh, we have the academic advisors, we have people like you, like everybody's there to support them. And it's a wonderful activity because we show all the different areas of the college, like surrounding the students and we're giving the names of people. People are speaking, both of you are speaking, or some of your colleagues. So it shows them that there's a wide array of support services for them. Mm -hmm. So for me, student success is about self-realization and of course, um, have that holistic view is to be engaged. But I want to go a step a little bit further mm -hmm. because it's much more beyond what my definition of it is. There is theory, there is research all over the world people are researching and about student success and what it is and how we can engage and have students be successful. So I want to share with you today a very important book that has changed my life many years ago when I was a teacher. And it's called, I don't know if you can see it. Uh, hold on. It's a beautiful up. background. There you go. <laughs> there it is. Okay. Student Success in College. So that is written by George Koo, K-U-H. And also in this particular edition with Jillian Kinsey, John Shu, Elizabeth Witt, and other associates. And in that book, I just want to point out there's 12 different areas of the book, which um, I just want to mention because it's, it speaks about when you put all the 12 different areas, the, the holistic nature of what I'm speaking about. So the first one is student engagement. And remember when I say there's three items for students to, mm -hmm. you know, if they want success, well, the first one is about the student engagement. Number two, the mission. The mission and lived educational philosophy. As a director general, I have to remind people every day that we have a mission, vision, and values. Sometimes people in the community go, oh, here's our director general again, the mission, vision, and values. We've heard it a thousand times. Why is she saying this again? We know it. Okay. But it's important because it shows that our very mission, vision, and values are all focused towards student success and student engagement. We want them to be successful. So, you know, in our mission, the college is dedicated to fostering the individual success of its students and their development as well-rounded 
responsible and informed citizens of the world. So does, isn't that, I'm sure that what you do every day is about that. Everybody in the college contributes a part, whether it be big or small, it's all interrelated for the, uh, the success of our students. Mm -hmm. So our, our mission, and then we'll go to, um, and then mission clarity, tell me again, it says. Really, it says mission clarity, tell me again. So I know I'm doing the right thing, even as, oh no, here she goes again. I know I'm doing the right thing. I'm reminding people all the time about her mission. Then the third chapter is about an unshakable focus on student learning. Okay, it's called, you know, there's a few um, different areas in that chapter, engaging pedagogies. How often do we try to find different ways to engage our students, multiple ways, making time for students. Isn't that what both of you do? Mm -hmm. That's really important. They need to have that connectedness with somebody at the college, not just somebody, many people. And also feedback, that constant feedback to students, telling them, yes, you're doing well. Oops, there's a little thing here that we could um, practice better so that you're, you know, you're better at it. Mm -hmm. uh, and then environments, okay? If you look even at the, um, uh, strategic plan of the ministry. We could talk about engagement and also about the environment. Mm -hmm. Everything's interrelated. We're using the setting for teaching and learning and creating human scale learning environments. And when we talk about learning, it's not just a, about the academic. Everything about your environment is helping the student and even ourselves grow as individuals. The fifth one, a clear pathways to student success. What new students need to know? You know that welcome session? Well, that makes a big difference. The students who are there, who already connect with people, we tell them, here's your agenda, here are the services, here, here's this and here's that. We have so many things to tell them, but that too, we need to keep repeating. Because as we repeat, we have to remember that students, it's, you know, coming from high school most of the time, it's so much information for them. Can never say, oh, but my God, we told them this already. Why don't, you know, why don't they know? Well, we have to remember that we have to keep repeating. There are so many things to tell them. Mm -hmm. um, so, and affirming diversity in that same chapter, clear pathways to success. Don't we have so much diversity, either different cultures, different backgrounds, but sometimes just students that um, some do better academically and some don't do as well. But with that extra help that we give them, sometimes students can just go like from a 60 average to a 90 average mm -hmm. because you've gotten them so involved and they feel that connectedness. Uh, number six chapter, an improvement oriented ethos. So realizing the vision. Okay, what's the vision of our college? As a director general, I have to remind you again, that's my role, right? Oh, here she goes again. Okay, so our vision. Passionate in its commitment to students and inspired by its mission and vision, Champlain Regional College aspires to offer unique and innovative high quality programs and services. Graduate students who are recognized for the excellence of their knowledge and skills they have acquired. Attract and retain outstanding faculty and staff who must be doing a good job because we've, we have both of you. We have silly and serious, you're still with us. You're outstanding. Great. Stay long, please. <laughs> and be a learning centered college. You find that funny. That's good. And probably Scott finds it serious. <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's great. Well done. <laughs> well done, yeah. Okay. And um, so then we have investing in education, championing learning communities. Uh, creating a campus-wide intellectual community, curriculum development, uh, data-informed decision-making. A lot of times we say, well, data, data, data. Oh my God, that data all the time. Well, you know what? Data actually informs us. It shows us where it is that students are struggling. Is it in a certain program? It is, is it in a certain course in a program? When we have that data, we can say, okay, we didn't realize, like, if we didn't have that data, we wouldn't have known that. So we can actually focus on particular areas and work with faculty, departments, and programs to see how we can actually further help in that area. 
Number seven, we're almost there. Shared responsibility for educational quality and student success. Aren't you part of that shared responsibility? You know, when, when we speak about success, we, oh, academic success, the, the grades, the art score. And when I say, well, sure, that's academic success, but it's much more holistic. It's actually people like you and many others around you at the college that are part of that shared responsibility mm -hmm. at the Board of Governors also. You know, it's a higher level. You may not see board members as often as I do, but really their role also is to have an overview of everything that we do at the college and to be able to, um, you know, make some suggestions sometimes because there's very uh, people from varied backgrounds also at the board. So about leadership, uh, you know, people that play that role, leadership, so either um, the senior management committee or the board. There's also faculty and staff and there's student affairs. That's, and it's written in the book. I'm not making it to uh, give you compliments. It's actually written in that book. Um, so part eight is the academic challenge. High expectations for student performance. Sense of writing, reading and class preparation. So that's the academic part of success. So you have to think that when students are engaged in um, student success activities, we have to keep in mind that they have a heavy workload of mm -hmm. homework and engagement in the academic area. So it's that fine balance between the two. Number nine, active and collaborative learning. Classroom is not like it was, um, you know, or like it has been for many, many years. We speak about learning to learn actively. No longer about just the professor being in the front, students writing notes, buying their books and reading them and memorizing everything and coming, oh, I've memorized everything and have A plus on my exam. Well, sometimes what that would used to do is then you go on the uh, job market and you're no, no longer just memorizing things. You actually have to be actively doing something at the job to make a difference. So we have many, many different ways to uh, engage students in the active and collaborative learning. Learning from peers, we have peer tutoring uh, programs learning and communities. We send out our students in internships. But there's also the service and learning in the local community engagement that we have. And this puts them uh, directly in contact with what the real world is about, all about. And uh, also responding to diverse learning styles. You know, some students learn better by hearing, others learn better by reading, others learn better by being engaged. Uh, and this is where we speak about experiential learning. Mm -hmm. And student-faculty interaction. Well, students need that connectedness also with the faculty because otherwise they might say, oh, my teacher doesn't like me, so I don't like the course. Sometimes they make that direct relationship or I really like my teacher. Sometimes there's that connectedness and suddenly the student does very well in that class. So it's quite complex. Mm -hmm. um, it's not easy for anybody, but somehow it works. Uh, 11, enriching educational experiences, infusion of diversity experiences, and international and study abroad. Well, like I said, we've uh, doubled the number of students in my past life when I was a teacher. Just that, that's one activity, but there are so many others. Also in that same chapter, electronic technologies with what's happened with the COVID and everything is not really important today. Mm -hmm. uh, civic engagement, internships and experiential learning, co-curricular co co leadership. Uh, number 12, supporting campus environment. Transition programs, we have the um, uh, deck uh, that we have in the network. We have the peer support special support programs of which you know very well about being in student services mm -hmm. and also even our residential environments. We have residences at the Lennoxville a Constituent College, maybe not at St. Lambert, but there's also a, a big important aspect that comes from student services also mm -hmm. uh, in other colleges, but in, in, our, uh, in our specific college at Champaign, we have Lennoxville. So once again, I'll just bring it back out, it's mm -hmm. so important. Yeah. I'm not sure where to go. Oh, here it is. Yeah, it's perfect. There it is. <laughs> Student system college. If, oh, 
it's an inspiring book for all of us, anyone who's in a college setting. Well, I think that you brought up a lot of great points. It's, ext <laughs> it's extremely complex and there's many, many facets to, to student success. It's not just academic, correct? Um, which you brought up a lot of amazing points. Thank you so much for that resource uh, as well. Um, definitely something that Dean is probably going to, uh, to purchase and make us all read <laughs> in student services, which is great. Um, and, and I guess I just want to reiterate that we all have a role to play in the success of, of our students here. Every, every one of us, every department, every faculty, every admin, everybody. So thank you very much for, for um, you know, mentioning that and emphasizing that. Yes, thank you, Odette. And I want to say, please come back every week because you you have been our most complimentary guest. So, I know, right? <laughs> you know, my head is like, you see it getting bigger. It's not going to fit in this little square soon, but yes. And uh, yeah, amazing. Thank you for that. You're, you're always one of our uh, best supporters of the work we do here in student services. And since we have you uh, in a little box, we want to thank you for that. Exactly. Well, th thank you all. I, I don't know how much I can say. Um, you know, I'm speaking to both of you, but I want to be also speaking to everyone who will be watching this um, video, how much we thank every single person in our colleges and even our ministry. We've been in contact with uh, Madame McCann also, who so cares about what we're doing, wants to know more and wants to support us as much as possible. But thank you for everyone, to, to students for you know, um, being so courageous in this pandemic transition, it, it's hard for every single person at every single level. And uh, it's, it's the togetherness that has made it successful. I know it's not easy. I know it's different. It will create a new norm eventually. But thank you to all of you, anyone who's listening to this video or, or not even listening to the, the video, you all contribute to the success of our students. Mm -hmm. But mostly me and Sheila, right? <laughs> Of course, of course. Okay. Now that was the funny uh, or serious and silly, wasn't that? That was, that was serious, yeah. <laughs> we, we can, sooner or later, we have to bring it back to us. That's why we have this show. Um, okay, so Odette, we are going to switch gears. And, um, you know, if you've, you've watched a couple of our shows, we like to uh, switch things up. We like to make things a little bit serious, uh, silly. So uh, we are going to play a game called Champlain. Versus. Champlain. Versus. Champlain! <laughs> As uh, we mentioned, uh, Odette is the Director General of the three uh, constituent colleges of Champlain. So Odette, we're going to give you a category along with uh, three uh, things to go in that category. And you have to please tell us which one is St. Lambert, which one is Lennoxville, and which one is St. Lawrence. So Sheila is going to start you off with, I think... Uh, Pretty easy one. Yeah, this is a pretty easy one. I, I, yeah. So the first category is student number. So the number of students per college. So we have 3,000, 1,100, and 900. So which category do they fall in? So we'll start off with 3,000. Yeah, that is St. Lambert. That's right. Good. That is St. And, Lambert. <laughs> and what about 900? That would be St. Lawrence. That's right. Yes. And then the 1,100 1, is obviously Lennoxville. So good job. Very mm -hmm. nice. No? I think that's Lennoxville. <laughs> <laughs> Great nice. job with that. Very yes, nice. I, I was right. just kidding. I was just trying to be silly. Yeah, it's perfect. <laughs> um, so one I of my jobs. I answer like... serious and I did the last one silly. <laughs> serious, serious, silly. Uh, one of my jobs at the college, uh, Odette, is I work in athletics, so I work with the sports team. So this next category is the, uh, the college's team nicknames. So we have uh, the Cavaliers, we have the Lions, and we have the Cougars. Let's start with hey, Cavaliers. Cougars, Lennox Phil. The Cavaliers is St. Lambert, the Lions are St. Lawrence, and the Cougars are... Mm, Lennoxville. <laughs> very nice. That's amazing. Very three nice. Three again. <laughs> very nice. Very nice. Um, what about the directors of constitu con constituent colleges? So you better Don get this one right because they'll be watching and they'll be angry. <laughs> um, okay, so we have Don Schuin, Edward Berryman, and Nancy Beatty. Beatty. 
Yes, Nancy Beatty is that uh, she's the director of constituent college at Lennoxville. Good job. Edward Berryman is director of constituent college at St. Lawrence, which is in Quebec City. And Don Chuen is the constituent college director at St. Lambert. Amazing. Amazing. She, this lady knows what she's doing, everybody. I know. <laughs> um, all right. So we have two more. Uh, me, one of the things. Uh, People may not know is me and Odette are neighbors. Uh, we, we won't say where we live, but we're we're not really neighbors, but we live in the same uh, area. Mm -hmm. um, so, from your home, Odette, which highway would you have to take to get to these college? We have the one thirty two East is the first one. Oh, okay. I I thought you were going to give oh, me yeah. the three at the same time. Okay, <laughs> no. the one thirty two East goes to Saint Lambert. Very Actually, nice. I didn't know. Uh, I didn't know that you lived close to where I did. Okay, but now I know. Yo, Scott, how do you know that weirdo? Scott, how do you know where I live? <laughs> I, I don't know exactly where you live. All right, this is taking a turn. The twenty east. That's Saint Lawrence. Very nice, and the ten east. That's my office in Sherbrooke. Got you there. Oh, and Lennoxville. <laughs> <laughs> yes, in the Lennoxville campus. That's great. I think I, Sheila now has the most important yeah, question. I have the most important question. <laughs> what? Which one is your favorite college, your favorite Champlain? Is it St. Lambert, Lennoxville, or St. Lawrence? Just between it's us three. Just, yeah. Just between us three, it's Champlain Regional College. Oh, very good. Very politically correct. Very nice at it. <laughs> But it's St. Lambert, right? Obviously. Wink twice if it's St. Lambert. No, no. <laughs> it's Champlain Regional College. I'm here as a director general. That is my role. Yeah. And I really yeah. love, you know, all of the constituent colleges, the Sherbrooke office. It's really the success of the, of the full college is from the all the different parts of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Yes. So and Post will edit St. Lambert, she left. <laughs> <laughs> Horrible, Scotty. <laughs> Thank you so much, Odette. Honestly, um, for you to take the time with us today, uh, we obviously understand that you're a very busy woman. So thank you so much for that. Um, if we do have, uh, maybe not students, but how would how would one contact you? Uh, well, through, through Scott, through my mm -hmm. email, or through my assistant, Nathalie Coudin. Okay, perfect. Yeah, perfect. at any time, uh, you know, I have a busy schedule, but you also know that I'm uh, I'm at the different constituent colleges very, very often whenever there is something. It, it's only hard when I have four um, meetings at the same time, same day, same hour. <laughs> that becomes a little bit more difficult, but I always try and squeeze it in. So anytime, it's always a pleasure to spend time with you to see what you're doing for students, uh, the student engagement. It's really my passion. Oh, so wonderful having you with us today. Thank you so much again. Uh, we really appreciate you spending the time with us. If you guys want to keep following us, us on our Serious and Silly, you can follow us on our Champlain St. Lambert YouTube page. And we post on Tuesdays and Thursdays. And our debt will probably be posted on Thursday, which is going to be, yeah, I don't know what. I, <laughs> with Wait, editing and what. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Um, but yeah, so thank you very much, Odette. Scotty, would you like to say any final words? No, just thank you, Odette. It was very nice uh, talking with you and seeing you. Uh, we have, you know, we usually see you around a couple times each semester. Unfortunately, we haven't had that chance yet, but we look forward to uh, seeing you again soon. And as we said, uh, Sirius and Silly is here when you need it. So mm -hmm. come by anytime. Thank you. And I'd like to know, I'd let, just to let you know that if you see me a couple of times, I come, if not 20, maybe 30 times a year. Mm. So just so you know, but it's, okay. you, you can't know it all because I'm all over the place, right? We have four different locations. Yeah. Okay. But thank you very much. Keep thank up you. your good work. Thank you very It much. is in part silly. It is in part serious. And I love that dichotomy. Well, I love it. Thank you so much and have a great day. Sure. Thank Bye. you. Keep up the good work. Thank Bye -bye. you. Bye.